In June 2022, six months into my film photography journey, I made a YouTube video titled, Film Photography Isn't Expensive. Now, it was an intentionally controversial title, but the point of the video was to say that we can enjoy film photography without breaking the bank by shooting in a sort of reserved style. Now, of course, this is easy for me to say because to me, film photography is just a hobby. I get out and shoot when I can, and usually shooting a roll of film takes me just over a month. So with film per month, as well as getting it developed and scanned, I usually spent around $30 a month on all of that, which is really pretty tame as far as hobbies go. But I'm also aware there's people out there much more committed to shooting film than I am. People who aren't buying film with US dollars and people who shoot more film, whether that's for clients or for fun. And the catalyst for bringing this video to life was actually Kodak raising their prices on film stocks across the board, changing that juicy Portra 405 pack from $80 to $95. That's a pretty significant change, so with that, I want to do what I can and give you guys five tips to help make film photography more affordable. Let's get into it. The first tip I have is to scan your own images. Instead of dropping off your roll film and getting it developed and scanned, you can get it just developed, pick up the negatives, and then do the scans yourself. Now this is much more feasible if you already own a digital camera, like a DSLR or mirrorless kind of thing, uh, because if you don't, then you'll have to buy one, which isn't exactly economical. But if that's you, you can scan your own film negatives with a relatively simple setup. It'll take a little bit of research to find out what components you need for your camera specifically, but here's what I use. You'll need a 1 to 1 magnification macro lens, a light table, a tripod, and a pair of cotton gloves. The gloves are optional, but worth it to keep your negatives pristine. In my experience in online research, getting film developed usually costs around $10, while getting scans usually costs around seven to 12, more money if you want higher resolution. So if you scan yourself with a setup like this, your setup will pay for itself after around 20 rolls of film. Definitely an investment, but worth it if you shoot a lot of film. Scanning your own images also gets some other benefits like high resolution images, complete creative control, and you get to learn a ton about how to use Lightroom. While you can do all the basics just in Lightroom, Negative Lab Pro seems to be a game changer. I haven't used it myself, but I think it makes batch converting your negative scans much simpler. But it's also $100, so another cost to incur upfront. To be transparent, while you can do this with a bare bones setup, it's tedious, especially if you use an older finicky macro lens like I did. If you have the money, it's definitely worth getting a native macro lens to make your life a little bit easier. And there's plenty of resources online to figure out how to do this, but I'll link a video from Grainy Days in the description. Another thing you can do is develop your rolls yourself, and admittedly this makes more sense if you're scanning your rolls as well. That being said, this is for the braver souls out there. It requires the space for the containers and the chemicals and some technical know-how, but you'll definitely save money. Like scanning yourself, it takes a decent amount of rolls to start going positive on your investment. A processing kit costs around $100 from B&H, so you'll probably need to develop at least 10 rolls before you start to break even. Also like scanning your images, this allows you to get more involved in the film photography process and you get to experiment with processes like pushing or pulling your film. Now I haven't done this one myself because I don't have any more room in my tiny ass apartment for more photo shit. Fair warning though, it's all on you to do this process correctly. If you mess up, you will ruin your film. From what I understand, black and white developing is more forgiving than color, so I'd probably start there. I'd also probably shoot a few rolls of cheap black and white film around the house and develop that before I develop the black and white roll that I spent a month working on. Again, there's plenty of resources online and on YouTube for learning how to develop film, but I'll link a video from Sean Tucker, which I really enjoyed, in the description. I'll also admit that scanning and developing are best when done together. Unless you already have a macro lens, a developing and scanning setup combo will cost at least $300. There's also the recurring cost of chemistry, but that's not really that bad. All of this to say, if you want to save money on scanning and developing your film in the long run, you'll need at least some cash and a workspace up front. Now those first two tips are definitely for people who are heavily invested in film photography, but for the casual enthusiasts, I have a tip for you as well, and that's shooting with half frame cameras. If you don't know, half frame cameras use the same 35mm roll film we're used to, but shoot images half as wide as a standard full frame 35mm camera. These are excellent for exploring film and they're also perfect for travel. You get 72 exposures instead of normal 36, making every roll of film twice as economical. Now because every half frame exposure is smaller than a normal full frame exposure, you're sort of cropping in on your roll of film. That means that the grain in your image is larger relative to the size of each exposure with half frames. So if you're a grain enthusiast looking for that distinct film feeling, this is really just a bonus, but otherwise you probably won't love the look. It's important to note that half frame cameras are not SLRs. Instead, they're actually much closer to point and shoots, although there are options like the Canon Demi 
and the Olympus Pen that have some more advanced control to them. Either way, don't expect to be changing lenses here. The Canon Demi and the Olympus Pen are readily available on eBay for well under $150, which is pretty affordable. There's also the Kodak Ektar H35, which you can buy new for $50 right now, but that's essentially just a reusable, disposable camera, so don't expect any sort of controls there. Let me be clear, if you're shooting film for a certain threshold of optical quality, half-frame cameras just aren't for you. But if you're looking for the simple fun of shooting film in a very compact form factors, I think half frames are perfect. Now I know studying the film stock before using it doesn't actually make the roll of film you bought any cheaper, but I do think it will help your percentage of keepers per roll go up. Here's my thinking. If you know how you expect the film stock to behave in certain situations, I think you'll be more selective with your shots and only press the shutter when you're convinced that that shot will work with that film stock. I did this with the roll of Portrait 100 a few months back and it was my best and most cohesive roll of film to date. Now of course if you've already shot 100 rolls of Portrait 400 or Cine Stille 100T then this doesn't really matter like you know how that film stock behaves. But I do like to keep this in mind for when I'm trying new film stocks. It helps me get my aesthetics and subject matter in check before I even pick up my camera. Now this last tip is obvious, I know that, but I really do think that we should all be more open to trying out cheaper film stocks, especially black and white. Personally, I haven't shot a roll of black and white film in months, generally because I think shooting color film is just more fun, but I'm also a firm believer that shooting black and white film makes you a better photographer. As of March 1st, 2023, one roll of Portrait 400 is $16, while Pan 100 is seven and Ilford Delta 400 is 12 if you want something a little more refined. Again, I'm very aware that we wanna shoot the film stocks that we wanna shoot, but I also think it's important to keep an open mind. Another great option is shooting expired film. Plenty of eBay sellers and camera stores sell expired film at a discount. Brooklyn Film Camera has three packs of expired rolls for $30, which honestly seems a little expensive now that I say it out loud. Anyways, if you're willing to shoot some film that doesn't look quite right, it requires a little bit of extra light, expired film could be worth a look. There's an entire community of photographers who are committed to shooting just expired film. You should check out the hashtag over on Grainier Instagram to see some awesome work that they're creating. At the end of the day, I wanna make it clear that I understand that none of these tips do what we want. We want our favorite film stocks to stop going up in price so we can stop emptying our wallets just to take photos. But right now we're at the mercy of Big Daddy Kodak, so I'm just trying to do what I can. And what I can do is give you guys a sixth bonus tip and that's to shoot black and white film in bulk. I just recently discovered this from Tokyo Camera Style on Instagram, who is really cool. You should definitely follow him. But anyways, he posted him bulk winding black and white film, and I didn't even know this was a thing that you could do. So I looked into it a little bit, and you can get a bulk winder for around $50, I think, and then 100 feet of black and white film, which is the equivalent of 20 to 21 36 exposure rolls, I think, from what I've learned. And that'll be about $115. So for about $175, you can get 100 feet of film and a film rewinder, and then you can wind your own black and white film from that point on. I didn't run the numbers on it, but I know it can save you some money, so if you want to shoot a lot of black and white film, that's definitely something to look into. There's a lot of resources for this on YouTube, so I'll link a couple in the description below so you guys can learn more about it because I'm not an expert on it. But that is everything I have. That's six tips for saving a little bit of money when it comes to shooting film. I know it's not perfect, but I tried, okay? Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.